Today we will talk about a philosopher you may not have heard of, Moses Mendelssohn. But you may know his grandson, the composer Felix Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn distinguishes between the ability to know, the ability to feel, and the ability to desire. The ability to feel comes between the ability to know and the ability to desire, and it is the ability by means of which we feel pleasure or displeasure. Although there might be a sense in which we progress from one ability to the other, not every knowledge is necessarily connected with any sentiments, and not every sentiment necessarily leads to any desires. For instance, you could read a physics textbook without getting sentimental. You could also find a painting beautiful without desiring anything. Mendelssohn thinks the goal of the ability to know is the true and the goal of the ability to feel is the good. Accordingly, since we have the ability to know, we strive to make the concepts in our soul agree with the properties of their objects. And since we possess the ability to feel, we strive to make the objective properties agree with our concepts of goodness, order, and beauty. Thanks to the abilities to know and feel, there are two contrasting inclinations in humans inclinations to truth and to fiction. When the ability to know is engaged, we become inclined toward truth, and when the ability to feel is engaged, we become inclined to fiction. In the former case, we are only concerned with how things actually are, and in the latter case, we have a preconception of what order, beauty, and perfection are and we strive to arrange the world in a way to fit that preconception. We think of our preconceptions as good, and that is why Mendelssohn says the goal of the ability to feel is the good. Ultimately, our ability to desire might become engaged as the result of what we feel. Thus, we might desire tolerance, peace, or we might simply wish happiness for our friends. The problem is, sometimes we engage our ability to know too much when we are supposed to look for beauty and desire. A purely rational person cannot desire seemingly impossible things. Mendelssohn himself was a Jew who deeply wished for religious tolerance in a religiously segregated Europe. If he had wanted to only rely on what he knew, he would have given up and never become the major figure of the Jewish Enlightenment. Mendelssohn's preconception of order, beauty, and perfection were different from other members of his society, and he desired the world to change based on what he deemed good. For Mendelssohn, feeling and desiring were not enough. What he valued was the transformation of the dead force of desiring into the living force of activity. This takes place either internally or externally, meaning either we internally become aware of a situation, in today's jargon one might say we become woke, or we externally become active and do something about it. For a purely rational person, things remain at the level of the dead force of a wish. If we are to make the world a better place, we sometimes need to alter the constitution of objects according to our sentiment.